Good morning, students and staff, and welcome to our carol service. Again, it's a different carol service, unlike two years ago. However, we are making progress. Last year, we had a pre-recorded carol service. This year, we're having a live carol service, and we are back in the hall. Unfortunately, not all the students are with us, but we are greeted with uh, our musicians this morning and our readers. We are making slow steps. I know it's not the steps we envisioned this time last year when we were saying the vaccine was coming out. However, we are going in the right direction. So it is important that we're optimistic, that we're positive, and that we look positively to the future. We need to realise that, you know, if something's worth it, it's worth waiting for. And we will get back to that normality. So our readings this morning and our music this morning has been selected and I hope that it will speak to all of you up in the classrooms and to everyone that is watching us live. All the readings have a meaning and I would encourage you and invite you to just listen to those readings. When the music is playing, of course, enjoy it, but it's important as well when the readings are being read that you just maybe stay silent and keep this element of silence that's existing here in the hall right now and just Listen to all the meaningful words. We will have our adventry uh, lit in a few moments. We will begin with our music. As you can see, we have our uh, crib here, uh, which was made by Mr. Walsh last year. And I think it just, it just brings together all the symbols of Christmas, the importance of Christmas. And I'll speak a little bit more about that in my reflection later in the service. But I want you to just sit back, relax, and enjoy our carol service 2021. And we're going to begin with our opening piece of music. first day of creation, you made the light that scatters all darkness. Let Christ, the light of lights, 
hidden from all eternity, shine at last in your people, and free us from the darkness of sin. Fill our lives with joy as we go out to welcome your Son at his coming. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. reading from the prophet Isaiah. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness a light has dawned. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. The word of the Lord. Thank you. 
seldom notice how each day is a holy place, where the Eucharist of the ordinary happens, into an eternal continuity that keeps us. Somewhere in us a dignity presides, that is more gracious than the smallness, that fuels us with fear and force, a dignity that trusts the form a day takes. So at the end of this day we give thanks, for being betrothed to the unknown, and for the secret work, through which the mind of the day and the wisdom of the soul becomes one. A reading from the Gospel of Luke. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favoured. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favour with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will give to you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month, for no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to, be me, to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. The Gospel of the Lord. Music is very impressive, I'm sure you'll agree. It's lovely to be just able to sit back in the classrooms and relax and enjoy. But as, uh, just before we go on to our next piece of music and before we continue with our readings, I just want to kind of bring a sense of the importance of our carol service, the sense of importance of this tradition and why we celebrate this and what it means for us. And I suppose we want to be a peaceful people and we want to be a people that are happy. Now we're often at war with friends, family and neighbours. But isn't it interesting that at Christmas, no matter how negative your relationships are, you always try a little harder to make them more positive. And I suppose it goes down to what's really inside of us and what we really care about. And that's that we want to be loved and we want to love others. And sometimes as human beings, we do struggle with that because we put conditions on everything. And if we go back to the story of the Nativity, where Mary and Joseph were trying to find shelter before Mary gave birth to Jesus, 
and nobody would take them in. They had to run from their homeland. They were refugees. And yes, they didn't give up hope. They didn't give up on their dream of a peaceful, positive future. And we need to be the same. If you can recall um, World War I, when they fought in the trenches, both the German and the English side on Christmas Eve ceased firing at one another. And on Christmas morning, early in the morning, they were brave enough to step out of the trenches and walk into no man's land. With a football, they managed to play football that morning, forgetting about what was happening throughout Europe, forgetting about the war, forgetting about the negativity. And if two groups who hadn't agreed to do that, they didn't even plan it, but both sides decided to do it, it does show how simple we can let go of our negativity. It does show how simple it is to actually be positive and be peaceful. There is something inside of us that we need to let out. And the difference between us and God, we put conditions on everything. I'll forgive you if you do this. God's only condition is you have to be sorry. And I don't think that's much of a condition, really. If you are truly sorry, you're always forgiven. And I think it is important this Christmas that we open our hearts and forgive. Let go of the hurts and the pains. It doesn't matter if they don't say sorry to you. It doesn't matter if they've been horrible to you. You have one choice. Your choice is this, that you can be positive, that you can smile at them. Even if they don't smile at you, you can hold your head high and say, well, I'm trying. That's all it takes. And sometimes that's true strength because it's too easy to look at the ground or give someone a dirty look. But that's not a, nobody really wants to be like that. If you ask any student sitting in the classrooms right now, would you like to be a negative person all the time? I'd be surprised if the answer was yes. So it is about being peaceful, about looking out for one another. And I suppose it is a special morning as well because we remember that this school was founded by the Holy Faith Sisters over 50 years ago, over 60 years ago, apologies. And the heritage still lives on alive and well in the school. What Margaret Aylward envisioned for us is still very much at the heart of what we do here. And she wanted all of you to have a good education, and that's what you're getting. COVID or not, we are doing our utmost to make sure that you get the best. So I think it's important, especially now that we don't have an opportunity anymore to gather and pray as a school community because of the restrictions, we have an opportunity now, sitting wherever we are or standing wherever we are, to pray. So I'm going to pray for each year group and then we're going to have a special prayer at the end where you will all think of an intention and then we will all pray one prayer together. So for our first years, may all our first years feel truly part of their new school community here at St. Wolstons. For our second years, we pray that you will experience the joy of Advent. For our third years, that you will be kept calm and you will focus on working towards your junior cycle. For our TYs, we pray that you will continue the growth you've begun at the beginning of this year and continue to push yourself and push your boundaries. To our fifth years, we pray that you will find peace in your hearts this Advent. To our sixth years, we pray that you will maintain your focus and commitment towards your leaving certificate. To our staff, we pray that you will all have a peaceful and restful Christmas and that you will have time for yourself and for your families. And the last prayer is for our families. Now, when we say the word family, Christmas can be a tough time, but families come in all shapes and sizes, and no family is the dictionary definition of a family. Who you have a home and who matters to you, that's your family. So we pray for all your families. And we remember everyone that's away this Christmas that maybe can't be home with us. And we just remember all them. And we especially remember those who are very close to our hearts who are no longer here. And we just remember them and remember the good and the happy memories we have of Christmas's past with them. And maybe together, just for a moment now in class, we will all pray the Lord's Prayer. So, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. And we just ask God that he will grant every blessing to everyone in this building, everyone watching this video, and everyone that yearns for peace in their hearts.
Amen. fancy bows, strands of twinkling lights, and shiny ornaments, but do not show love to my family. I'm just another decorator. If I slave away in the kitchen, baking dozens of mince pies, preparing gourmet meals, and arranging a beautifully adorned table at mealtime, but do not show love to my family. I'm just another cook. If I work in the soup kitchen, sing carols in the nursing home, and give all that I have to charity, but do not show love to my family, it profits me nothing. Love stops the cooking to hug the child. Love sets aside the decorating to spend time with family. Love is kind, though harried and tired. Love doesn't envy another's home that has coordinated Christmas china and table linen. Love doesn't yell at the kids to get out of the way, but is thankful that they are there to be in the way. Love doesn't give only to those who are able to give in return, but rejoices in giving to those who can't. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. Video games will break, pearl necklaces will be lost, golf clubs will rust, but giving the gift of love will endure.
of Matthew. Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the reign of King Herod. About that time some wise men from eastern lands arrived in Jerusalem asking, where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his stars at rose and we have come to worship him. King Herod was deeply disturbed when he heard this, as was everyone in Jerusalem. He called a meeting of the leading priests and teachers of religious law and asked, where is the Messiah supposed to be born? In Bethlehem in Judea, they said, for this is what the prophet wrote. And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not least among the ruling cities of Judah, for a ruler will come from you, who will be the shepherd for my people Israel. When Herod called for, then Herod called for a private meeting with the wise men, and he learned from them the time which the star first appeared. Then he told them, go, and, go to Bethlehem and search carefully for the child. And when you find him, come back and tell me so I can go and worship him too. After this in interview, the wise men went their way, and the star they had seen in the east guided them to Bethlehem. It went ahead of them and stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house and they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down to him and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasure chests and gave him gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. mystery waiting on the threshold of this new year. You open the gates and beckon to me. Come, come, be not weary of what awaits you as you enter, enter the unknown terrain. Be not doubtful of your ability to grow from its joys and sorrows. For I am with you and I'll be your guide. I'll be your protector and you'll never be alone. Guardian of this new year, I set aside my fears, my worries, concerns, open my life to mystery to beauty, to hospitality, to questions, to endless opportunity of discovering you in my relationships, and to all the silent wisps of wonder that will draw me to your heart. I welcome your unfailing presence now and always, and walk with you with hope into this new year.
Vakarja. I'm Abby, your Deputy Head Girl, and unfortunately your Head Girl Neve can't join us today. We are your Head Girl and Deputy Head Girl for this coming school year. We are delighted to be able to speak to you all live, as last year this wasn't possible. It is definitely a strange year and it's been challenging for both staff and students, but we have all shown a great level of resilience and displayed a great sense of school community. We would like to take a moment to thank in particular our Principal Miss Barry and our Deputy Principals Miss Smith and Mr Carlin. We have had plenty of fun this year despite the obvious challenges from our Halloween dress up day to the recent Christmas door competition organised by Miss Harren. All the doors were spectacular and really brought variety to the corridors. Although there was some sabotage and some displays did fall down, shooter classes made sure to find a way to, fi to, fit, to go forward fixing their displays before the deadline. We started our prefect journey in late October and we're in good hands between Miss Garrity and Mr Kerrigan and we would like to express our sincere gratitude towards them for all their support. Ellen and Nikki left us very big boots to fill and we would like to thank them for their shared tips and tricks and all of the previous prefect team. We would like to thank everyone again for keeping safe and keeping the school safe by wearing their masks and maintaining social distancing. We would like to wish everyone a very safe and relaxing Christmas and look forward to seeing you all in the next term. Gurf Mila Mahagwiv August Nulig Sona. my great pleasure and indeed my honour as Principal of St Wollstone's Community School to say a few words to you during our online live Christmas service 2021. On behalf of the Board of Management, Ms Smith, Mr Carlin and I, I wish to acknowledge the tremendous efforts made by all our students and all our staff to continue to keep this school a centre of excellence with high standards of teaching and learning and to support us in providing a caring, positive, safe, clean, inclusive and friendly school community. During first term, we have enjoyed so many teaching and learning activities, as well as all the extras, extras such as Science Week, Creative Schools Week, Stand Up Awareness Week, our shoebox appeal, Kildare Disability Awareness Week, Halloween Dress Up Day, Leaving Cert celebrations for the class of 2020 and 2021, after school sporting activities, including camogie, basketball, Gaelic football, and hockey, Goshka Awards, lunchtime games, and our weekly friendly Kahoot quiz, to name but a few of the, of the activities. 
The last 20 months have been very difficult and challenging for all of us. But we have survived. We have survived because we have worked very well together and we have achieved many accolades. Working together online during lockdown, wearing face masks all day and keeping our distance has been hard, but we have done this as per the HSE and the DES guidelines in the hope of keeping ourselves and those around us safe. We've had an incidental inspection and we've had a COVID inspection and we've got top marks in both, so well done to everybody. Thank you all for your support with our COVID guidelines. Your kindness, your care, your consideration has helped to keep us all safe and healthy. Thank you to our staff for your tremendous commitment and care to our students and community. Thank you to our students for your help and for minding each other and for your kindness and care to us. Thank you to all our teaching staff, our SNAs, our secretaries, our caretakers, our cleaners, for all their wonderful work in supporting your well-being and learning and for keeping the school safe and clean. We thank our families and our friends for their kindness, their care and their love and support. And we remember those who are no longer with us. We think and we pray for them. It's great now that you've had your exams and they're over and you're going to be able to get a good rest over Christmas, I hope. And we will look forward to welcoming you all back here on the 6th of January. A huge thank you to Mr. Kerrigan and to Jason for looking after us today, to all our musicians and our readers and everyone involved in today's celebrations. It is just wonderful. I'm in awe of the beautiful skills and graciousness and courtesy and respect that's been given here today by each and every one of you in our hall for this very, very special service. I think the real joy of Christmas lies in not taking from others, but in giving. And I have seen tremendous giving in this school in, in the last term. So a huge thanks to each and every one of you. And I'll give you a small example of that this morning. We had a collection for, say, for um, Cromlin's Children's Hospital, our, our, our uh, jumper dress-up morning. And we collected 763 euro at the entrance this morning. And on top of that, the TY Mini Company, Horse Shoes For You, donated 105, which in total, and I used to be a maths teacher once upon a time, 868 euro. And the Board of Management was offering 500. We're going to round that up to 1,400 for Crumlin's Children's Hospital. I know recently we also had Krispy Kremes here and money was collected for St. Vincent de Paul. We would have also given 1,000 to Care of the Age here in Selbridge and we would have given 1,000 to uh, St. Vincent de Paul and some, I think it was 500 to other charities. So we try to be as generous as we possibly can and uh, instill that in each and every one of us. And just to say, look, have a good rest wishing you all a wonderful, peaceful and Merry Christmas and best wishes for 2022. Gaurav Mila Magwif.